Welcome to uh, Active Board Basics, Lesson 1, Basic Tools. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Johnson. I'm a teacher over at Terra High School. My email address is jjohnson2 at ebrschools.org. And of course, I can go over all that later. Uh, this was originally designed to be a self-motivated uh, Active Board lesson, but that's okay. We're just gonna, I'm just going to record myself going through it right now. So let's get started. First things first, by the end of this lesson, you should feel comfortable and be able to demonstrate using the following tools in Active Inspire, namely the Select Tool, the Pen, the Highlight Eraser, Shape, Text, Fill, Reset, and the Previous or Next Page buttons. Now you can tell I've got Next Page and Previous Pages here, but that was meant to help people out with their lesson, you know, while they went through it by themselves. I'm going to use them for now, and click on Next Page. What I did right now was uh, my own previously recorded voice is screened in my ear, so I turned it off. All right, before we can get any of the tools to work, you need to know where they're kept. This section of the Active Inspire right over here is your, where the arrow's pointing, of course, is your actual toolbox. All right, this is where all your tools are kept. All right, so if you, you can't see this on your screen, then something's set up differently on your Active Inspire, and you need to be able to find it. Uh, in later lessons, we'll go over how to customize this toolbox and how to move things around and whatnot, because yours probably has different tools than mine does. Alright. Uh, the select tool right here is shown right here on the arrow button. It is your left mouse click. Alright. So you activate it by clicking on it if it's not already highlighted. See how now it's not highlighted? Now it is. And what you do with the select tool is you click and drag things around. Alright. And so the point of this lesson but this part was just to click the red circle and drag it over. And you can do that with the pin, you can do that with the mouse, all you have to do, and if you have the pin, you just touch the the red bot, the red uh, circle or whatever and drag it around. But that's how the select tool works, it's just like your left mouse click. The pin tool is used for annotating or drawing all over your board uh, it honestly is just like a basic art program, although when it's used, you know, by people at the board, it's very easy to use it as a pin. However, right now I'm at my computer, so my mouse is not going to be you know, quite as, you know, clear. But you cl activate the pin by clicking on this tool right here, all right, and then you just draw, draw, draw however you want. If you're particularly, you know, you can even try and write a little bit. I obviously cannot write with a mouse. That is terrible. That is absolutely terrible. But with a pen, uh, I probably still look pretty horrible because I have bad handwriting. But that's how that works. So that's the pen tool. You have the select tool. You have the pen tool. And if you notice, if you hover, they even tell you what they are. The highlighter, the highlighter though, is a great tool for when you're wanting to work with text on the screen. Uh, say you put a portion of the book you're reading with your students up on the screen and you want to highlight certain portions. Um, it works just like the pen in that it annotates over the screen. The difference is the annotations are slightly transparent so you can read the words below the uh, highlighter. You see an example right here where I've put in a highlighter, you can still see the words. Here though, the pen completely would, you know, would cover up anything that's drawn over. The way you activate the highlighter is you click right here on highlighter and then notice you've got two options. You've got colors. Any one of these is a good highlighting color. All right. You also got pen width, and this also happened up here with pen. I'm sorry I didn't show it earlier, but here you can select one of the pre-selected widths of the pins. See how that works? Or you can just slide the bar all the way around and highlight like that. It really is your choice. Again, you can do the same thing with pins by choosing different colors. And do it like that. All right, so that's the highlighter. Remember, this is the highlighter right here. And notice the difference between a pen and a highlighter. Okay. Back to the select tool and next page. This is the eraser tool. The eraser tool is useful for erasing all these annotations. You see here, I drew this with a pen. All right. So the way you click the the way you activate the eraser tool is you click on the eraser right here. Choose your size. That, well, actually, color doesn't matter. You choose your size that you want, for example, like that. 
And it seems like I barely erased anything. Yep, I barely get a little bit in there. Or I just, most of the time for me, I'll take the whole eraser. And as you see, it's erasing the marks. All right. Um, you can also choose different sizes, but I like the big eraser for the eraser. You know, I just like to erase everything. The shape tool is used for making uh, basic shapes if you have no drawing skill like me. You activate it by clicking on the shape tool right here. Now when that happens, you see another whole toolbar pop up right here. You have uh, lines, you know, horizontal lines, vertical lines, uh, just any line, uh, freeform shapes, line chain. Uh, now the colors, the two color palettes that have opened up is this is the outer color, like the outline of the shape. This is the inner color, the actual filled part of the shape. So I will give you an example. I have a. I'm going to take a square. See, I'm going to leave it with a black outline with a yellow interior. I just left click somewhere and drag. Big as I want, but this is actually making a square, so it's going to be even. All right. If I chose a rectangle, I could make it, you know, anything like that. Uh, this is actually very, very useful for, you know, for people like I said who like me can't draw. Um, now, one thing I will point out, the eraser does not erase shapes. They're not what are called annotations. All right. So, for example, if I take the pen and I write a little bit, big pen, let's choose a more moderate size pen, blah, 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 and I say, oh, I want to erase this, I don't have to worry about erasing the shape. It's perfectly safe. So that's the shape tool. Uh, if you look here, you see a wide variety of other shapes available. This is actually very nice for making straight lines. See, I can't mess this line up. It's really cool. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab here, take these here, grab them all, and throw them right here in the trash. See how the red arrow appears over the trash can? Boom, just threw them away. You just learned how to use the trash can. Good job. So, shape tool. Uh, what I wanted to show you all was like the free form. Watch this. Sorry, I was supposed to have done something, but apparently it doesn't. That's okay. Um, see, normally I thought it was going to like try and actually make. Th ah, that's what it does. It fills it in if I draw a decently enough connection. The problem over here was that I didn't do it right. I went too far. So if I come up here, click, boom, fills it in with the color that I chose up here. All right. So I'm going to grab all those again. Throw this away. Go back to the shape tool. Uh, the zigzag line. You let go and then click again. You let go and then click again. See? Just this is you know free form there until I click, 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 click. All right. And that's how that one works. I'll throw that away too. Now also, if you'll notice down here at the bottom, you see another little set of arrows, you can get more shapes. Dotted lines, arrows, uh, you know, any number of things. Factories. Wah. I've made a factory. All sorts of tools to help you make your flip charts that much better, that much more interactive, and that much more interesting for your children, for your students. All right, I'm going to go on to the next page. The text tool is for typing in text, you know, because as I showed earlier, my handwriting skills are atrocious. However, my text, my typing skills are pretty good. Now you see I've got a little text box, and I can keep typing all day long. But I did want to point out something. If I keep typing, it will just keep going. All right, so we've got a little problem there. I'm going to bring this over here. I'm going to resize this. And notice that it's now wrapped around to where I can fit it. But instead of you know typing all the way past the edge of the screen and then coming back and having to fix that, there's an easier way to do this. I'm going to click the, select the text tool again. Click here. And I'm going to set how big I want the box to be. See, I've dragged this over. And now the, the text will not go any further than that. It will just keep wrapping uh, no, that's not it. As I keep typing. See how that works? Now, I will tell you, hang on, I'm just going to show this. 
It will keep going past the bottom of your screen, though. But I think that's probably easier for you to stop at. So, let's click, drag, toss. Next page. All right, so we're going to talk about the fill tool next. Uh, the fill tool is used for filling in shapes. We saw earlier with the shape tool, it automatically fills it on its own. But this is if you drew a shape without a, without a fill at first, and you want to fill it in. So I'm going to click fill here. I'm going to click blue. Fill the circle in with blue. Click red, fill the circle in with red. Now one of the cool things is, let's say I want to change the background of my, of my flip chart. I like to use yellow on most of my flip charts. So I just fill the background. And now the background is filled with yellow. Makes it very, very cool. I can even change the shape of my buttons up, the color of my buttons up here, to where they're easier to see with the new background. Lots of colors everywhere. See, I can even paint a little bit, you know, fill in the paints on uh, this object here. And while I think this might be hilarious, I'm not really accomplishing anything right now, so I'm just going to move on. So that's the fill tool. You can you select it by clicking here on fill and pick your color that you want. Next page. All right. Reset page is for resetting a page to the way it was at the last time it was saved. All right, so I'll give you an example. Draw, 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 draw. Absolutely horrible here. I'm going to click reset, and it resets to the way it was before it last saved. Now you might be thinking, well, that just erased the page. Not quite. Watch. I'm going to click up here. I'm going to save this as a copy of something. All right. We'll save that there. I'll save this is a pretty big flip chart once I put in all the extra features that I put in. Now I'm going to draw with a different color. I'm going to click reset and the blue didn't disappear because the blue was there the last time it was saved. Alright, so reset will reset the page the last time it was before it was saved. Which also means if I go back and I click reset it won't do anything because it's already saved this here. All right, so that's the reset page. It's, what it's most useful for is if you're doing group work and you think, okay, I'm gonna have three groups rotate through this flip chart. I could close the flip chart and reopen every time, or I just wanna do this one page with three different groups of people. We're gonna play with it, reset, play with the second group, reset, do it with the third group, reset. And you're good to go. All right, so that's the reset tool. Next page. Now the previous next page buttons are used for, like I've been doing, going back and forth between the pages. And they look like these buttons here. They're over here on your toolbox, right here. If you hover, it even says previous page, next page. And so instead of hitting those buttons like I've been doing, I could be doing that. Turn the sound off. And here. So this is what allows me to, you know, go back and forth between pages. And that's the previous next page. I can't think of any more ways, simpler way to say that. Going on to the next one. And so that is the end of the basic tools for Active Inspire. I hope this was helpful. Um, I will make this flip chart available to anyone who wants to work through it like a workbook, which is what I built it for. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, email me at jjohnson2 at ebrschools.org. Uh, if, if you can't hear me say it properly, uh, of course, the email is written on the very at the very front of the video, and it's also listed in my YouTube channel, and I'll even have it pop up uh, in a little bit on this video. So I hope everyone has a good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.